Hey guys, I'm P-Freak. Welcome back to Pokemon White Version. Last time, we made our way through Route 1, got a new partner in York the York and uh, Yorky? York the Lily Pup. <laughs> York is what it's actually based off of. And then we made over to Nuvima Town, had a bunch of stuff happen there, including a, some sort of like Renaissance Fair looking guys talk about liberating Pokemon or whatever. Then we made our way up here to Strayton City, where is going to be the location of our first gym battle. In this part, we are going to do the exact same gym battle I just mentioned. However, are you looking for the gym leader? He's not here. You could be in the trainer school. If you want to challenge him, please go find him. The trainer school is not far from this gym. Ugh. I hate that they do this every time. Yes, the trainer school is literally right here. Just been almost, well, let's see. They didn't do it in the original red and blue because that didn't have a trainer school in there. Or not even in the gold and silver. But did they do it in, I don't know. I just know definitely in Diamond Pro and Platinum, they also made you go to the trainer school to find the first gym leader for whatever. Actually, no, the training school wasn't even in the first gym town. We should have to go find the first gym leader. Anywho, hi Sharon, what's up? My Pokemon is poisoned, its HP decreased as well as battling. Hey, P Freak, have you come look for the gym leader? Uh, yeah, how'd you know? He was here talking about Pokemon types just a few minutes ago. Maybe you walked right past him? By the way, P Freak, will you have a battle with me? I want to test how important items are in battle. Fine, I guess we have to. Well, let's see how effective my items are. Maybe I should test how well you can battle without items. Anyway, this is an indoor match. Let's battle without getting too rough. I mean, there's the last trainer school had an actual like area for you to battle indoors, so not quite sure why this one doesn't. Anyways, we're gonna battle Sharon. He is gonna start off with Oshawa. Oh, he does start off with Oshawa. I got mixed. Like I was doing some research. Um, okay, so I usually get my information from Boltpedia and stuff, but lately Boltpedia has been having issues. So issues, issue region. <laughs> I just realized that. So I've been having to resort to other sources as well to get some information, and one of them said that he would actually send a purloin first instead of Oshawa's. Uh, yeah, spoilers, he has a purloin. I kind of find the interesting. Moves that never miss, and moves that can attack first. There sure are a lot of different moves. Yes, there are, Sharon. You don't even know the half of it. You don't even... Anyways, so, I find it kind of interesting because... And he has an orange berry. He did talk about, um, items, so... Berries are one of the few held items where... Oh! I didn't realize they actually added that effect in this game. Okay, let me start from the top. First of all, um, yeah, I get my di I have to get my sources from my information from different sources, unfortunately, until Bobia fixes whatever is going on with it. <sighs> Second of all, uh, it is interesting because Sharon has a Hermoin and Bianca has a Lily Pup, so I find that kind of interesting. The whole cat and dog sort of thing. Finally, I didn't know that they actually had it in this generation where pickup, if a Pokemon, if the enemy Pokemon actually uses an item, then pickup will actually pick up that item that was just used so you can have, so then that Pokemon can actually hold it. That is something that, that I guess they introduced in Generation 5. So that's pretty neat. It's important to choose which item your Pokemon holds. So yeah, beforehand, pickup was only an out of battle ability. It had no purpose in battle, but they changed it to now have an in battle ability. Perfect, so that's pretty cool. Ember's still not doing anything, so we sh okay, I guess we can't continue with tackle because with Growl, that's gonna lower our physical attack. And do about the same. Whatever, I'll stick with Ember right now, I guess. Yeah. Eventually we will be getting a physical fire type attack, so we won't have to rely on weak little Ember for so long. Though I don't think that's gonna happen for quite a while for us to get that attack. That's this, that's an interesting move. Uh, of course, it pulls the best move we as this basically pulls a move from one of your, from the move pool of your, or well, the move pool of your entire party. So that's your Pokemon, that Pokemon actually knows. So like, it grabbed Water Gun from Oshawa because Oshawa knew Water Gun right now. Oriel's good at level 10 though. So that's cool. I see. Lose it to you means I still have a lot to learn. Yes, you do. Although that bullshit crit was really annoying because Lilypub would have totally survived and actually been able to KO you because of the Orin Berry picked up. So, learning to use items well is definitely important. I hear Pete Freak, I'll give you these berries. Then we get some even more orange berries. I'll take those, actually. If you give Pokemon this kind of berry to hold, it will eat up to yield when its HP goes down in battle. But if you give Pokemon man made items like potions to hold, they can't use them. Well, good luck then. Yeah, so only certain items can actually be held by Pokemon and actually used in battle automatically. Oh, and I guess the gym leader's back. I'm gonna heal up real quickly. But I guess while I heal up, I'll explain what I'm saying. Yeah, certain items can be held by a Pokemon, and they will passively use them in battle. However, that doesn't apply to all items. Like uh, Sharon said, man-made items like potions, Pokemon don't know how to use them, so you're going to have to use them yourself. Actually, spend a turn to use them yourself. Uh, this becomes really important, especially in competitive battling, so 
Definitely keep an eye on like giving. In fact, let me actually give uh, York and. Oh, it di didn't keep the orange berry that I picked up. Interesting. Yeah, well, I guess it makes sense. Let me actually give York and Borealis uh, some of the berries that Sharon gave us. Because I have a feeling we're going to need those in the future. There we go. You must be the gym leader. Yes, yes, I am the gym leader this time. You are? Right. You want to challenge the gym. In that case, what was the first Pokemon you chose? Tepig, I see. It's weak against water type Pokemon. I think you need to prepare to face that type. For example, try training your Pokemon in the Dream Yard. Please excuse me for now. Wow. Okay, a little cocky, don't you think? But I guess he's trying to say that we might be facing a water type Pokemon soon. Again, like we had to do with Sharon. So we had to go over here to this place called the Dream Yard. I don't think there's any way for us to avoid you. Yeah, we're gonna have to battle you. We, we are training here. Now let's train Pokemon together. Sure, whatever you say, lady. All right, through that one battle alone, York actually gained two levels there and learned the new move, Bite. Bite is a standard dark type move that just, that does damage and also has a chance to make the Pokemon flinch, which basically is a chance to make the Pokemon not be able to do anything during that turn. Here's another one of those suspicious trees that we can't deal with. Uh, you're another trainer. I think I could have actually avoided you. God damn it. My goal is to outperform gym leaders. Can you win against me? Uh, good luck with that, buddy. Good luck with that. Alright, and in that battle, we got York up to level 10. Nice. Alright, I think those are the only two trainers around here. But you, you're kind of important if I remember correctly. Hey, hey you, what was the first Pokemon you received? Tepic, really? Then Pan Sage could be a big help. Your Tepic doesn't, does not do well against fire type, water type Pokemon. Say, do you want this Pan Sage of mine? Uh, sure, I guess. Okay, here you go. He can use grass type moves, so that can make it great against water types. And we receive a free Pan Sage. Pan Sage and its brethren, Pan Seer and Pan Poor, are interesting Pokemon simply, so I'm not gonna give it a nickname. If you have many types of Pokemon, something will work out, no matter what kind of Pokemon you have to face. So, these are guys, these guys are known as the Elemental Monkeys. If we take a look over at Pan Sage itself, it's already level 10, so that's pretty good. It's a Lex. It's fine, I guess, but yeah, so these are known as the elemental monkeys. Basically, you get whatever monkey is actually weak to the type of starter that you got, so it will actually help you against the type of Pokemon that your starter is weak to. Uh, so if you get an Oshawott, you will get a Pan Seer, and if you get a Snivy, you will get a Pan Poor. These guys are also known to be really hated within the Pokemon community. Honestly, they're not that great in stat, like stat-wise, battle-wise. They're just kind of nice to have for this early game because, as the, as the gym leader said, we are going to be facing a water type probably pretty soon. So it's fine to have for the gym battle, but honestly, don't take it with you throughout the entire thing. Also, fun little fact: Panseer's evolution, Simiseer, was in the poll that was ran a few years ago, I think, actually. It was considered basically the worst Pokemon out of the existing Pokemon back then. It probably is still considered the worst Pokemon, like, to all Pokemon fans. I don't know, I don't mind it too much, but it doesn't have the best move pool, so that's definitely a problem. Anyways, with that little rant out of the way, there is one last thing I want to do real quickly. I completely forgot to fight those uh, trainers. Oh, there's an item over there. I thought there would be. I completely forgot to fight those trainers down in Route 2, so, and that's some valuable early game XP I want to get found an X speed. This is an X item. X items are basically items that you spend a turn using, but it's basically like using a boosting move. Uh, boosting move for a turn. So the X speed will give your Pokemon one speed stage. Stages are weird to calculate kind of, but basically think of it like this. I believe it's um, like every two every two stages you're basically doubling or like three times in your base speed or whatever. It's something like that. Basically the higher the stages, the um, more po more powerful the stat, and it can go up to six stages. So, yeah, that's fine, Dandy. Anyways, without any further delay, let's go inside the gym. Hello, who might you be? It's a fancy-looking gym. Hello, I'm Clyde. I'm the guide for the trainers challenging the gym Pokemon gym. We appreciate your challenging the gym. Take this as commemor to commemorate the occasion. We get a fresh water. This is actually a really great healing item. And he doesn't even explain what the item is. Okay, so, the fresh water. Water that has high mineral content. It restores the HP of Poke one Pokemon by 50 points, which is way better than a potion. So, and typically you can buy fresh waters for pretty cheap. I don't think we can buy any right now, but eventually we'll have the ability to buy them. Problem is that you can never buy them in bulk, unfortunately. I think there's only one game where you even have the chance to buy them in bulk. Welcome. We are very proud of our menu, which we adjust to suit each trainer. All right. Anyways, gyms. Uh, sometimes gyms will have. Typically, gyms have a puzzle that are associated with them. For this one, you might have noticed that the guy was talking about like different types of stuff. 
we have to basically decide which type is strong against the curtain typed above us. And if you know anything about your Pokemon types, which is kind of the, like one of the main cores of the game, and also they constantly try to shove it down your throat, like, hey, don't forget the type chart and all that, then this is a pretty gym challenge for you to get through. Also, each gym will typically have gym uh, trainers that you have to battle. These trainers are tip typically they have required trainers, then you have optional trainers. However, when you defeat the gym leader, you will no longer be able to fight any gym trainers you skipped. So it's definitely a good idea to fight these gym trainers just um, so you can get the experience. You don't want to lose out on pretty easy experience. Because trainer battles will actually give you more experience than regular wild battles will. Which is why I also went down to back to Route 2 to actually fight those trainers. So I will be taking, even with, if we have optional trainers, I will be basically be taking care of all the optional trainers off screen before we fight the gym leader. But in here, I believe all the gym, train gym trainers are actually required for you to fight them. I'm going to quickly use one of our potions on Borealis, because Borealis did take quite a beating, because, yeah, that was a level, I believe a level 11 lily pup we fought there, so, yeah, they're not screwing around here. Specialty of Stridenton, the full course, Trina de Lu. I'm your second course. Trainer Deluxe? I don't know. I think they're trying to, like, import some sort of French stuff, because France is known for like, culinary things, but I don't know. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Let's switch over to York over here. By the way, in case you're curious, I basically like to keep my Pokémon at roughly the same levels with them. I can't always do that perfectly, but it's because I used to do the thing where I would only train one Pokémon ever, and uh, they made it be incredibly underpowered, so... Uh, oh, it looks like gym, we're getting to the gym battle already. I'm gonna go heal up my Pokemon real quickly. Alright, and now that we're fully healed up, I think it's time for us to take on the first gym battle. Against this weird green hair dude. Welcome to the Striaton City Pokemon Gym. Oh, there's two of them. I'm Chili. I light things up with Fire-type Pokemon. And I'm Water-type Specialist. My name is Cress. Okay, so there's three of them. And their entire color motif is based off the type they specialize in. Was it like that through childhood, or did through childhood they have actually normally, normal, whatever? Pleased to make your acquaintance. My name is Silent. I like the grass type Pokemon. Also, I believe their names are supposed to be food puns or something like that. Um, you see, as for why the three of us are um, all here, here so. Oh, enough. Listen up. The three of us will decide who you'll battle. It'll be based on the type of the first Pokemon you chose. That is indeed the case. And the partner you first chose was the fire type, it seems. That's correct. It shall be I, and my esteemed war types that you must face in battle. Alright, so, you are going to want to save real quickly before just about every gym battle. The reason why I say you save is that, like, if you lose a Pokemon battle, then you lose money and stuff like that, and you don't want to go through that typically. You don't have to save, but I like saving before every battle. What incredible luck for you. You get to battle the best amongst the three of us. I'm sure you are. We are against Cress, but... All jokes aside, I kind of find this interesting as like a first gym battle because it again it's based off of the first type of Pokemon you choose. So, like I said, if you have Tepic here, you fight against Cress. If you have Snivy, you fight against Chili, and if you have Oshawa, you fight against South. So it's definitely interesting. Uh, that is not a War type though. That is a Lily. Pokemon. I'm sure we'll be encountering a War type pretty soon though. So gyms usually have a single type specialist. Oh, workup's gonna be scary. Really, but I completely forgot about that. Uh, usually gyms have a single type specialist. So to have these uh, all be a different, not be a type specialist, but to be a counter type specialist is kind of interesting. All right, uh, how do I want to do this? There's two stages of attack, so its attack is basically double if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's gonna be it. so that turns into, turns into 75 base power, actually. Compared to 60 of dark, yeah. Okay, so Tackle's just going to be our best move for now. Uh, Dark's uh, having a bite is more for if we encounter Ghost-type. Ghost-types are actually immune to all normal-type attacks. Yeah, that hurts. But now, he's going to actually use a potion. Oh, and... Wow. Okay, never mind. He's going to just use the Orin Berry that we just used. Okay. Well, this is awkward. Yeah, this is a rather tough first uh, gym battle for me. Oh, York saying with the 1 HP. Okay, there was a chance that Chris wouldn't use a potion there, but... Alright. York's staying alive with 1 HP, though. That's pretty cool. Um... I'm gonna actually go and... Oh, this York picked up something. A super potion. That's basically a fresh water, but in potion form. Huh. Yeah, we have spare Pokemon. I'm actually gonna switch over to Patrat. We're gonna use Patrat. We're not gonna be using Patrat for a battle at the time, so... We're gonna use it as a sacrifice play. 
to then basically have a safe switch over to Tepe, because if we use a turn to switch out, the enemy Pokemon can still attack. So we're going to switch over to Borealis. A little more, more. And Tackle's going to be probably our best. Actually, no. I did the... Maybe? Oh, come on, of course. We get Flinch. That's the other thing I should have mentioned about Flinch, is that you need to be faster than Pokemon in order for Flinches to actually work. Because otherwise, it doesn't matter if they flinch. It does, it's not like the next time they flinch, they... Oh, wow. Great first battle, by the way. Having a great time with this first battle. Ugh. You know I'm going to see if I can try to get a tail. No, nope, I'm going to... Oh! That's two Pokemon now that have survived with one HP. Okay, I'm going to actually use potions now. Most people actually don't use potions during battle and like challenge runs or whatever. I am not most people. I won't have fun. Yeah, this is a bit stressful. This is only the first Pokemon. We still have one other Pokemon to deal with, by the way, so... Also, it's annoying that... Of course. Uh, there's no point in me healing. This is gonna look like just me cheating or whipping out or whatever, but, um... My game crashed. <laughs> so, that's fun. I guess I get to start the battle all over again. Uh, because of that, I think I'm actually gonna switch over to Borealis to start things off first. You'll see... Why later on, and let's actually grab that super potion from the other York. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? Yeah, 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 yeah. strong. So yeah, this is a pretty hard gym, first gym battle, not gonna lie. Later on, gym battles will, I guess, get easier, quote unquote, as you get more Pokemon, but gym battles are meant to be challenging, so this is a pretty good first gym battle. Especially considering that most of the time we're either fighting rock types for the first gym battle, or the single time we fought a flying type in the first gym battle. See, so yeah, literally, Kanto, Owen, and Sinnoh, the three just start with uh, rock types, which means if you chose the water or grass starter, you're good, but if you chose the freaking fire starter instead, you're kind of screwed each of those times. Uh, thankfully, though, Typhlosion is the best uh, starter to choose in the Johto game, so at least we got that going for it. Um... What is the number differential between pretty high eight whole points? I think tackle might just still be my best bet, even if it's only fifty. Okay, it only used worked up once this time. That's not too bad. Uh I'll use the tail whip to see if we can actually Oh no, then it's gonna use the berry. I should have taken the berries off actually now that I think about it. Especially against the silly cup. Oof. Yeah, because now it's going to pick up, and now it's going to use the berry. Yikes. That's big yikes for me. Whatever. And it's using work up again. Okay. Yeah, this is a big problem with having Borealis be so slow right now. But I'm pretty sure we can still somehow uh, pull this off. Somehow. Without having to go back and, like, train some more. Okay, there. We actually feed the Lilypub this time. Nice. All right. Borealis growing to level 13. Nice, nice. Defense Curl, and uh, Defense Curl raises your defense by one, but I don't expect us to be using that very often anytime soon. I like to just use attacking moves and maybe sometimes stat lowering moves. And finally, Leader Crest sends out Pantvor. Sorry, I just wanted you guys to hear that. That's the nice thing about Generation 5. It has dynamic music. Even when you're fighting the gym leaders, it has dynamic music. This only goes off if you're fighting the last uh, tr the last Pokemon of the gym leader. So, let me use Tail Whip. This thing's probably going to... Oh, no, it's going to work out. Okay. So, yeah, there's no way that Borealis is going to be surviving too much longer. So, instead of trying to deal damage, we're actually going to use Tail Whip to lower its defense. And so, we have a higher chance to actually defeat it with another Pokemon. Even though it does give it more chances to use workup. However, I do believe Lillipup should... Actually, that Pampo is level 14. Uh, maybe we should have done some training beforehand. Alright, hopefully he has no more... Um, yeah. Workup is such a strong move, though. It raises both the physical and special attack. So it's like, it's good for mixed attackers. It's good for just about anyone who can get it. Uh, Alright, so let's send out York now. Hopefully York can be fast enough to actually... Okay, tackle off. Oh, it's going to use another workout. Okay, we need to get this. <laughs> we need York to either KO this thing, or we're going to have to rely on Pan Sage. Was I have right, Pan Sage in the back? Oh, that was a crit. Okay. Press is going to use potion. Gym leaders always use at least one potion. 
Okay. Come on. Oh no, this is my KO, really. My KO, York. <gasps> yes! Nice. Good job, York. And with that, we defeat the first gym battle, finally. Yay! Nice. Not too bad, although it did take us two tries, technically. But to be fair, it would have still taken us two tries, even though it didn't crash. Helping hand. Helping hands and <laughs> interesting move, I guess? The user assists the ally by boosting the power of its attack. This is only good in double battles, a battle type we have not encountered yet. But basically, um, the Pokemon uses it, and then its ally Pokemon will be able to attack and have more power boost, like do more damage or something like that. I've never used it myself, but there are a lot of AIs out there that like using it, so... I'm gonna give up on helping hand. Alright, and just that, we defeat Leader Cross. Lose me? I don't believe this. And we got a lot of money out of that one, jeez. Why, you're quite remarkable. It's the Pokemon League's rules, so please take this badge. And we get the badge, our first gym badge, out of eight, if I remember correctly. It's a pretty cool looking badge, too. And they have this cool little animation, too, of you putting it in your badge case. <laughs> P-Freak receives the trio badge from Chris. Gym badges are proof of the trainer's abilities. If you have one badge, Pokemon, including trade Pokemon up to level 20, will obey you without question. We also want you to have this. And we get TM83 Workup, the move I was talking about that was actually really good, and I will definitely be giving that to York. TM83 contains Workup. If you use Workup, the Pokemon's attack and special attack go up. By the way, TMs can be used as many times as you want. Yes! So, TMs are basically little training dip. Oh, wrong thing. TMs are basically training discs for your Pokemon. We have a TM bag right... Uh, pocket right here. These are little training discs for your Pokemon. They will teach your Pokemon the move related to the disc. In previous generations, from Generation 1 to Generation 4, TMs used to be single use. However, they changed that in Generation 5 for them to now be infinitely used, which is definitely, definitely a good thing. We are definitely giving it to York. I wish Borealis could use it, but we are definitely giving it to York. Let's get rid of... Let's get rid of Leer for that. It's better to boost your own stats than lower that of the opponent's stats. Alright. With that all said and done, though, I believe if we leave the gym, though, things are going to happen. So I'm not going to leave the gym quite yet. I'm going to call it here. So we managed to actually get take care of our first gym battle, even though it took a good while. That's going to be for now. If you like what I do, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media. It's all that in the description. Next time, we're going to step outside, and we're going to see what is going on now that we have our first gym battle. Our first gym batch. I'll see you guys then.